Hey there guys, welcome back to Hersey Games and welcome to our QPR Career Mode FC24 edition. It's my yearly series and this year we are sticking to a very strict schedule. Two uploads a week, one on the weekend, one in the weekday. That is final, that is happening and this series is going to be my biggest and probably longest series on the channel for FC24. For those who don't know, I'm a QPR fan and my dream is every year to take QPR to the top flight of football, win some trophies, get some stuff done and that is the plan this year around. Obviously FC24 brings a lot of new changes with career mode and some of them and a lot of them I'm very very happy with. So the plan is jump into this career mode, no messing about, let's get things underway. Few things of like admin and stuff to talk around and then we'll get through that but Without further ado, let's start our first FC24 career mode. And of course, it's episode one of the QPR career mode. I hope you guys are excited. Okay, so my plan is for this career mode, I'm going to start off on Legendary because I haven't played much FIFA at all. At the time of recording this, I played one game of Squad Battles and three games of Div Rivals. That is it. That is all my FIFA, or sorry, FC24 experience I have. Halves, I'm going to set to four. If I feel like I can set them to three because we can get enough highlights and things per game, then I will. Just means I can get more matches and episode for you guys. Um, I'm turning off international job offers because they are the bane of my life. No financial takeover. And I am going to disable the first transfer window. Now, my reasoning for this is the squad we have IRL right now, we are going to stick to. QPR don't really spend money anyway. Our last transfer window was all free agents and that is because the club at the moment financially is not in a great spot. And I'm going to make it part of my mission in this career mode as well to also financially sort the club out, make the club stable, bring some young players through that could potentially then go on for money to give us the chance to buy players. That's kind of the vibe, that's the plan. The money we're gonna be spending in the first transfer window is going to be focusing on the coaches and upgrading them. Also working on our youth system because I think that is going to be a huge part of it and kind of try and keep this first part initially realistic. And then come January, we can start making tweaks to the squad, start making some changes to the squad. Now, at the time of recording, there's a couple of players QPR are linked with in the free agent market. And if there's a way for me to sign them, then I will, uh, or at least I'll try to. But don't forget this, of course, isn't based on real life. I'm not going to just make the signings and sales that QPR make, but of course it may help us with some decisions down the line. But let's jump into it. Let's start things locked and loaded. New beginnings, first season, first time doing anything career-based on FC24, and I'm very, very excited. Well, but well, here well, we are coming in later, as our first interview. Nice. You can see I'm rocking the tracksuit. Uh, obviously it's in black, which our coaching ones are black and yellow, but I could just get the black for us. But here we are, we are back where we should be at QPR, very, very excited. Uh, obviously this is a new thing, tactical vision. Uh, some of this I'm gonna be learning as I go. I've seen a couple of little things about it. Uh, for anyone who watches other career mode content on YouTube, MGH is one of the goats uh, and I'm watching his Arsenal career mode. I always watch it, I love it every single year. Um, and I'm gonna learn a little bit about the tactical stuff now and work out how it is I want to play. Now standard seems a little bit boring. Wing play makes a lot of sense for how QPR play. Paul Smith gets a lot of the ball IRL and I don't plan on playing a five I do plan on potentially starting in a three to make the most of a player like Smith um, but we'll work that out a little bit nearer the time tick attacker also could work because I do like knocking the ball around a little bit Gagan press I don't really want to mess around with our um, stamina on players too much part of the bus no thank you counter attack could kind of be an option for us because again we've got the pace for it kick and rush someone like Sinclair Armstrong could make that work but that's asking for a lot so I'm personally, I think I'm going to go for Tiki Taka. Option to play the ball around a lot, get some nice passes, nice bits of fluid play, find the goal like that. We can kind of make that also work with um, the pace that we have uh, with some of those quicker players as well. But do I want, I don't want to go Gagan Press. That I think will be too much for me. I think, I think I'm going to go with Tiki Taka. The build up is going to be slow but I think that's what we're going to go for. Let's go with some Tiki Taka, boys. Okay, our weekly budget here is 131,000. Uh, hopefully, I can move the camera around in the edit and I'm not covering too much for you guys that you would like to see. Um, so it, it makes sense to try and get these guys that play Tiki Taka, right? Is, are these guys? Yeah, these guys are all Tiki Taka. This is actually really good. So we can get this guy 
who's going to be really good at everything and bring him into the club. Uh, I'm going to add him to attackers for now because I think that's going to be a real crucial part of our season. Uh, but we will pick up some more. I'm not just going to pick up just that one. But you can see this is really good for Sinclair Armstrong. It's going to help him out a whole lot. But uh, yeah, this, by the way, is not the squad we're going to be playing. Don't you worry. I will make some changes to it. Uh, but let me just sort out a couple more coaches uh, and then we'll crack on with that. Okay, for now, I've gone ahead and I've got one coach for each of our bits here. I think actually I might just get one more defensive minded. Oh, another five star attack has just popped up. That's going to cost us a pretty penny. But uh, let's just go with Justin Cock. Fantastic name. Uh, we'll bring them in uh, just to get their defense to at least a plus four. So realistically here, this is a really nice start for us. A couple of uh, little boosts and everything. Basically, the ideal means that that will be the best way for your players to develop. But the fact that we have got um, at least some stars and everything means that everyone's going to get some form of boost, which is great news. The next thing I'll be doing is sorting out our team. So... As I said previously, my plan is to run a three, not a five. So um, that for me is going to be the best way to operate in the way that I'm planning on going for this series. Now, a three, five, one, one kind of perfectly fits what I want to do, which is run that mid, uh, that back three, keep the midfield three alive by having the likes of, say, a field, a callback and a Dazelle have an Ilias chair play just behind someone like a Sinclair Armstrong, Powell on the left, and then have Smith on the right. Uh, but then we lose a player like Willock, which would be a real shame because he is very, very influential. The other option is going for this, this 3-4-2-1, uh, which again would mean converting Powell to a left mid, running a three back, having someone like a field and a Dizel or a field and a Colback, and then a chair and a Willock either side of a striker now that is what i'm sort of homing in on because i think it suits our creativity quite a lot it really is a no defense just vibes i won't lie to you it really does sit uh sit as in a very very attacking manner which i'm kind of absolutely fine with i'm going to keep it real with you lot uh, i really am absolutely fine with that so let me just very quickly try and sort everyone out here and have people in places that they're at least vaguely happy to be um so field isn't happy as a center mid so we're going to have to convert him to a center mid which knowing my luck is going to take a long time aussie can play center back i don't know why it says he can't clark salter is also going to be uh coming in i'm keeping cook there begovic obviously is our starting keeper uh, but that is basically what i'm looking to run uh as our starting team uh let me just sort the bench and i'll get right back to you Okay, so this is the starting 11 I am looking to run. Now, it's very, very obvious that our depth is not great. Uh, I mean, you look at the bench and we've got two players that are 70 and then we're looking at 50s and 60s. Uh, starting 11, obviously, we have a couple of 60s in there as well. Now, it's worth noting, I am throwing Sinclair Armstrong in there over starting Lyndon Dykes. Now, that might seem crazy, but for me, Sinclair Armstrong is genuinely going to be such a good player so it just seems to make sense to me with what i want to do uh tactics we've kind of gone on that tiki taka uh, we have sort of worked out where it is we would like to be players in the box i'm going to set up a bit more here corners uh corners will set you know what i'll set these at three i'm okay with that uh width when we're attacking i want us to be relatively wide um, and the depth, I want us to drop a little bit because that would just encourage the wing backs to come in a touch. I'm okay with that. Uh, Rolls, I'm going to keep Begovic as the captain. Uh, and then chair is almost on everything else. Uh, and then instructions, stay central, get in behind and stay forward. Uh, obviously, these three, I want them to stick to positions. I want both of these guys to cover center and stay back because we've got the creativity of Willock. Uh, and we've got the creativity of chair. Now, I kind of wanted them on free roam, but it doesn't let me do that. So what I think I'll do uh, is have Willock stay forward uh, and kind of have him mixed. I think that makes sense. Uh, and stay central. And chair, I'm going to have as a false nine. 
to have him kind of drop into that midfield and help out. Uh, I want them to come back on defense. Uh, it doesn't let me set it to stay wide. That I, th I think that's saying like it's locked because it's not very thingy. Okay, so I'll have him on stay wide. It does let me do that. Come back on defense. See, then it doesn't let me have him on stay wide. Now it does. I'm baffled. Either way, I want them to stay wide because um, that, for me, makes a lot of sense, having them stay in that wide position. So, yeah, that's that's what we're going to do. That's, that's the squad for now. And that is our squad until uh, January. Unless, of course, we have anyone in our youth system. Let's have a look. So, in our last career mode, we had some very, very good players. Harvey Hutton being the main man. Uh, this time around, we are not as lucky. We have Konstantin Radu, uh, who looks like he could be a good player, but uh, he is 52 rated, which is not great for us. Uh, having a little look, obviously he's a left back, and I've kind of just made that position pretty null and void. Uh, so I'm going to look at making him a left mid. Uh, now, his stats aren't great for a left mid, or particularly great for a left back. So... It doesn't really make too much of a difference, but he has got great potential. His work rates are low high, which suits a uh, a defender, of course. But medium high, I'm okay with. I know you wouldn't normally be on a left back, uh, left mid, but we're playing that three five, so it kind of makes sense. Um, but outside of him, no one else is looking that phenomenal. Uh, Salim Said, and I'm probably saying these wrong, and when I am inevitably saying these wrong. I do apologise. Medium, medium work rates. Defending's a little bit naff. Uh, but he could probably do a job at centre mid. So we're going to train him to become a centre mid. Um, and then you've got Enrique Garcia, uh, who is an out-and-out -out left winger. That's absolutely fine. Uh, and we will train him to become a better one. So that is what we're going to do with them. These two, I'm not too fussed about. They don't look that great, and I doubt they're going to get much of a chance. Kleber Cabral will probably be leaving the club in January, I'll be honest with you. Um, but I think, is there a way now that I can then look at a new scout? I don't know how I do that. I'm going to find out. I found out how to do that. I found the youth system stuff. We have Charles Haynes, uh, who is just going to stay in England. Uh, for nine months and hopefully find us some young English talents to start bringing through. Uh, and then I'm going to hire one more scout. And we've got the money to, to splash, but I'm not going to go crazy, crazy big. Uh, and you know what? I'm going to go somewhat crazy big. R2, you know what? I'll go with Olive Saar because I can say that one. Olive Saar in your gun, mate. Uh, and Olive Saar, we're going to send him somewhere we have had luck before. We're going to send him to find the next Ilias chair or the next Adel Tarabt. He is going to go over to Morocco and hopefully find us some creative players. So let's find some playmakers. Uh, position. Oh, this is a nice little touch. Central midfield playmakers, please and thank you. Sounds good to me. Let's go. Okay, so obviously I can set in place the training plan. Now, the training plan, I believe, is quite different to uh, how you would normally run them in previous FIFAs. So uh, my main thought for preseason is trying to really focus on performance, right? So I'm going to set us to slightly performance focused to try and get the match sharpness up, apply those changes, and then apply that to everyone uh, so then everyone is on the same thing, yeah? So that makes sense to try and get that sharpness up in the build-up to the season. Uh, and then once everyone's a little bit sharp, we'll set that back to being relatively standard. I think that is smart. But we've got some emails. Let's have a little look through, seeing what's coming through here. Player chats, nothing. No one's interested. We'll have a little gander and see what the expectations are. This is the youth stuff, which we've already done. So vision and expectations, boys. So youth development, sign four players uh, to each of the positions, goal field, uh, goalkeeper, defender, midfielder, and forward. That's fine. Brand exposure, replace three players from the team. So in January, we will have a look at three players in the team that need replacing. That seems a bit cutthroat, but here we are. Finish with table. I think that's a very good aim. I think that's fair and sensible. Um, and within two seasons, increase the club worth by 50%. Okay, that's going to be uh, a challenge, but I think it is very doable. 
Um, and that's all fine. That's all about the scout stuff, which is fine with me. Um, so I don't, do I, do I actually have to do the training stuff or no? I don't know if I have to do the training. I'm a little bit confused by that. Uh, but just before I think about it, going to Squad Hub, I'm just going to convert a few people to the positions I'm going to expect them to play. So I'll just go through that. So, for example, making power left mid, all the things I mentioned to you guys before, but I mo won't make you watch me do that. I'll do it and then I'll see you guys in a sec. Okay, that is all done. I've put on like specific training styles or things I want them to improve at, change a few positions for a few people or at least ask them to train those. Uh, considering he can play center back, it says Aussie's gonna take 40 weeks to convert there, which is annoying. Uh, also quite frustrating, uh, Sanfield apparently is going to take 127 weeks to become a centre mid. That's going to suck. Might just have to slightly tweak the position and make him a CDM because I think that's just going to save us a lot of time. Uh, a new thing as well, advanced customization. Uh, oh, that's not the thing I thought it was. Never mind. Begovic, what a boy. Uh, very happy to have him at the club IRL and in this safe. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, we have got some pre-season friendlies. Uh, for the sake of me potentially having a bit more of a chance to um be able to to actually understand the game a little bit better what i might do is just do the uh the, the simming of the preseason games and if we get through to like further parts of the uh, preseason stuff i might just do a play highlights i know the play highlights went down an absolute rotter last FIFA and people weren't a fan of it. I promise you the actual important games, so like league games, cup games, etc., will be normally played. Don't stress, don't worry, they'll be played normally. You can also look at training sessions here, by the way, and look at uh, these to give you temporary play styles. I probably won't be doing those. I don't think I'll be doing them anyway. Um, I think it just seems a little bit OP. Uh, but pretty much reports, you can look at the team you're up against or predicted teams, their play styles, etc. You can do that. I won't be doing that um, too often anyway. I think it's a little bit um, overpowered. Um, but yeah, what we'll do is, can I just sim the match? I can. We'll, we'll quick sim it just to see the results again, just because it's pre-season. We lose 1-0. We get some good minutes. We miss a penalty with Willock, which is a shame, uh, especially as he's not on penalties. But, uh, you know, Viteze, not a bad team. Very interesting already seeing let the training plans do their work. Um, I didn't shift anything noticeably i'm not sure what i shifted but apparently i shifted something while i simmed sure our second game we have got uh derby who i know are not the biggest fan of us uh can i change the squad from here i can triangle took me a minute but we got there just gonna change it to be a bit of a different team just because i think that makes sense to rotate a little bit uh, give a couple of players a rest, but also give a couple of players a chance to play. Uh, we'll throw Cole back on there as well. Uh, just, yeah, I think it I think it makes sense to give a couple of minutes to a couple of people. And it's a 3-1 loss. Uh, nice. Awesome. Cool. I bet I'm really selling you all on my managerial uh, masterclass right now. Isn't having enough impact. You want to adjust the schedule. If you're planning on including the lineups, you need to plan focus on energy. So... Clark Salter's energy is bad, is it? Cool. So I have to have him be not fit, uh, sharp. Okay. I think this will just take some getting used to, getting used to some tweaks of stuff. I think that's going to have to be the play. All right. Game number three. I've clicked play. I didn't mean to do that. Um, just to get you all excited, think I'm playing a match. I'm not. I'm not playing a preseason match. We're jumping to sim to the end. Uh, no, no draw. You know what? Again, after how bad our preseason has been so far, we'll take that. That's fine. Hopefully it shows progress. I don't know. But that is preseason done. Uh, our first game of the season is up against Cardiff. It's very much worth noting uh, fixtures are not in the same order as they were in real life. Stop telling me about this training plan. So you're going to you're gonna miff me off, uh, bloody assistant coach. You are going to start to upset me. But uh, yeah, it, it certainly seems like it is way more in depth this year and i'm absolutely okay with that i really am absolutely okay with that okay fantastic news is that pal has uh now converted into a left mid he's actually gone up in rating as well which is fantastic uh i would quite like him to be someone who can pass and cross and i think support midfielder makes sense so we're going to have him train on that 
that's really, really good. That's somebody who's now actually in that uh, that correct position. Team strategy is having a go at me. What's going on? What are you whinging about? I still don't understand what that issue was with that other screen, but it's absolutely fine. We are going to jump into our first game of the season. I don't know how many games we're going to get done in the first season. Um, I kind of, I'm kind of, you know what? We're going to do a press conference. We're going to get the morale of our players up. We're going to cheer people Thanks, up guys. a little bit. We've just joined here. Uh, what can they expect to see from us? Uh, what's the mood? Um, it's a talented group of players. I'm going to try and sound a bit like Ainsworth, and I'm absolutely okay with that. Can you finish in the top half of this, um, this season? We want to be safe, first of all. I think that's a smart answer, because that is true. We want to secure things first. Uh, why am I sticking with Kakai? I know there's a lot of QPR fans that ask that, and it's very unjustified, I think. Those who have watched the channel for a while, you'll know I love Ozzy Kakai. He'll play through it, and he will. Ozzy Kakai, honestly, on his day, is absolutely fantastic. He has great moments. I think he's a bit of a scapegoat. I think it's a bit unfair sometimes what people throw at him. And you know what? I said I'm not going to do them that often. I'm going to try one just to see what they're like. I'll do a training session just so I can say that I did it. Um, oh, my God. I don't have to do all of these, do I? I don't have to do it. Do I? This seems a bit much. Can't be asked. Not doing them. Full transparency. I'm, I'll find out if it's a problem later on. But I'm not doing it, lads. That seems like absolute nonsense. But that is our starting 11. I'm running with the team that at the moment I would consider our strongest 11. Uh, I'm going to put it in our away kit just because their kit is blue and white a little bit. Uh, but let's get into it. Our first game of our FC24 career mode can we start as we mean to go on a trip to wales you can see they're hyping up the start of the season i'm all here for these new animations and the new cutscenes. yes please yes thank you absolutely down for it this is sick i'm 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 down for this this is so so cool some great little highlights uh that ball looked a little bit blurry but that's absolutely fine hopefully we don't see that oh look at this this is sick boys i absolutely love that well done EA. that's really really class but come on you boys let's get into it God, you are. I did just pause it very early to turn the player names off at the top of the players because I find it a little bit distracting. I don't know if you guys do as well. But it takes away from the realism a little bit for me here. But lovely start here. And actually, we've got the ball straight into Armstrong, which is exactly what I was talking about. And what a start that is. I would absolutely love for that boy to get some more goals in the league. But that three minutes in, not even three minutes in, is exactly what I was talking about. The quick play through the middle, get the ball in, having the option of Willica Chair Central to play it through and get the ball into Armstrong is absolutely perfect. Exactly what you want to see. And a phenomenal start. You can see the strength and the pace of Armstrong just powering through. He's only low rated, but boy, it doesn't matter when you've got that much time and space in front of goal. One nil and a phenomenal start. It really literally couldn't have started better for us. So I'm absolutely fine with that. 1-0 and Armstrong opens his account for the season very, very early. Great tackle there from field. And hold on a second. Boys, it can't be this easy, surely. Hold on a second. I'm on... I promise you I'm on legendary. It's 2-0. What's going on? What is actually happening? I've literally done the same thing twice. And we've just walked through and we've bet. It, ca it can't be this. I've, I'm not being horrible. It can't be this easy. Surely. Can, is there any way I can I can check things here? Can I? I haven't got anything on. That I No, because I haven't changed. I haven't. Have I just got very lucky with two easy start, like starting goals? I don't think there's anything I can change. You guys will see at the start of the game, it said legendary. I Boys, I don't know what more I can say to you. It's 2-0, six minutes in. Watch it now, I get walked all over. But what a start. You couldn't ask for a better start. Be careful here. Robinson with a strike, but Begovic lets it go wide. Bit of a wake up, I guess, in the fact that they did kind of just walk through us there. So maybe it does go to show that I've just had a really positive start because they did come straight into an attack there from their kickoff. It really was quite easy for them to make their way through our team, but we've proven that it's quite easy to make our way through theirs as Willock is going to set Armstrong through again. Perry and G is not going to catch him. And boys, it's 12 minutes in and we are 3 0 up, and I don't know what to say. Do I, you know what? 
the next game regardless this game could finish 4-3 uh i i'm gonna put it on ultimate because this just it can't be this easy i'm, I'm not being rude it could be that we're playing really well against a team that's just defending poorly but we're three nil up 12 minutes in boys uh i i don't i don't know what to say i don't know what to say bought out wide here for cardiff they're going to play it back smith is going to have to try and cut inside ozzy's going to try and push the man close it's a good effort oh and that is just one of the posts i don't think begovic had that covered there not sure who the strike was from but it was a good effort edge of the box and that just zips just ever so wide from the post there that really could have been a problem and again that very easily could have been 3-1 Sam Field going to try and ping this across. Oh, I don't like that there's a little animation thing there. Apologies. I will try and find a way to remove that for when I'm playing balls in the air. But Armstrong now going to set it across to Ilias Chair. Ilias Chair, little cut inside. Going to try and find Willock. Willock with a strike. He does drag it wide. I'm just going to try and get rid of that animation with the, the lobbed balls quickly. Just for anyone who's looking to get rid of those uh, for themselves, I believe it's called the preci Precision Pass. God, that was tougher to say than I thought. Precision Pass and Precision Shot animation so i turn those off fingers crossed that is what i was looking for paul smith was his first real chance to actually burst forward here gonna try and take on his man now he's absolutely rapid and he's causing problems irl for people and that's a little bit unlikely to not keep hold of that and now we obviously do have our wide player on the right there missing ozzy with a lot of work to do but smith has done really well actually come back really really well there Dizel brings this ball forward, plays a lovely pass inside to Armstrong. He's going to try and set Smith away. And Smith, with that pace, is going to get that ball and he's going to find the back of the net. 4 0, 28 minutes in. And, all, boys, all I can say is I don't know either. I don't know what's happening either. I'm, I'm actually half tempted to now watch Sim to the end of the game, um, see what happens, and then change our settings to ultimate uh for the next game i don't really want to sim games especially league games hold on a second we could concede anyway begovic takes one to the face but it is a good save in the end uh, i think it was tanner that had the strike um but a very very competent save from the six foot six massive giant in the qpr net i'm gonna play the rest of the first half for sure and uh, provided it's still a comfortable clean sheet lead, I think we will end up maybe watch simming to the end of the game just because 4-0 seems ridiculous. Uh, and I think it will make more sense. And hopefully people would agree it's more enjoyable that I change the difficulty setting sooner rather than later, rather than potentially going and winning 7-8-0, which is just not, not going to happen anytime soon, is it? Let's be honest. It's actually a really good run here from Robinson, actually. Here's me talking about a clean sheet. And Begovic, again, with a really good save, was quick to come out there, made sure to call him out and have him close down that angle. But he did so really, really well. Stopped the attack, stopped the shot. And Willock there was a little bit unlucky on that counter-attack. But really good stuff from Begovic, considering we've seen how easily we've scored so far. Begovic has made some phenomenal saves. Great tackle there from Cook. He's not the quickest off the mark, but he was quick enough there to get to the man and stop the potential strike on goal but 4-0 at half time is truly mental I, I i i'm not entirely sure how this has happened but i'm very glad it has also these animations by the way these half time animations ea i i like it i like it a lot very well done to you uh i'm gonna rest armstrong we're gonna bring on linden give him a couple of minutes in there smith is somebody that is going to get tired so coley is actually going to come on and Chair's going to push to the right mid spot. Coley's going to come on as that sort of centre forward. Uh, big, big fan of Coley. I think he's got uh, a real sign of things to come. Uh, and we're also going to rest Cook and bring on Jimmy Dunn. Three changes at half time, just because of how comfortable we are. Performances, you can see Armstrong on a 10, Chair on 8.5, Willock on an 8.3. Smith is a goal scorer and isn't even in the top four. That shows just how well we are playing so we're going to jump to sim real quick apologies that we're doing this like i said I, I really do not plan on simming games or anything like that um especially league games but because we're four nil up um and i don't want to ruin the series first like episode by going and battering a game that we sh shouldn't win a game it's stupid scores you know so uh, i just think that this is the the safest way of not ruining it early doors and being able to amend the issue we have conceded. Callum Robinson has got rid of our clean sheet. Obviously frustrating because I feel like we probably could have kept a clean sheet if we'd stayed in it. 
But again, I think for the sake of longevity, it makes sense that we do this just for the end of this first game. Uh, I will bring you guys back in if anything happens. Um, but yeah, uh, apologies again for, uh, for having to do this first game of the new episode, uh, of the new series. My apologies. We have made a couple more changes, just so you guys know. Aurora and Lakesh both both baker their way on. So a, a player from the youth system and a uh, free signing that we've made this season in real life. So just giving them a couple of minutes too. A couple of youngsters that obviously aren't going to start. Good effort there. Linden couldn't get his goal, but Coley pops up with a goal. Very happy for that. Just like I was saying about Armstrong, super chuffed to see him score so early doors and it's great to see Coley get a goal as well. Uh, that's real, real good news. Unlucky for Linden, smashed that ball off the bar, but the rebound were, fell nicely for our young player and he has managed to find himself a goal, but maybe Linden could still be on the score sheet anyway. Oh, it's unselfish. He plays it back there. Last couple of minutes, we'll stick with it. We'll see how this pans out. Corner from Ilias isn't fantastic, but we're not very good at corners anyway. I'm not overly surprised to see that, but a good bit of a counter-attack kick. Uh, it is, I, did, I think Panzo was running down the wing. But there it is, boys. That is full time. 5-1 mental. Uh, let's change it to ultimate. That makes sense. I very much did not see that coming. Hopefully you guys also didn't see that coming. Um, but you can see he is on Legendary. Uh, he was four minutes Legendary. You guys saw me start the game. You physically can't change it in game, I found out. Uh, so ultimate it is. Fingers crossed. Um, that is better. And, and it works out in the way that we want it to, making it a bit more difficult. This is really unfortunate news. Paul Smith has hit his development already for the season. 69 rated. I think that's quite unfair. I'm going to be honest. I think that's quite unfair. I think he probably should have a much higher potential than just plus one. Hopefully the dynamic potential rating will see him go a little bit further. But a plus one, I think that's a bit unfair. He had a phenomenal season at Leighton Orient last year. Uh, and it really surprised me they think a plus one's suitable for that first season. But it is what it is. Uh, is the player thing any, anything important? Is Coley saying he is happy? Mate, outstanding. Well done, mate. I was going to finish the episode with just the one game played, knowing that I'm trying to make sure these episodes are manageable for me to edit in time and get uploaded. But because I had to end up simming half the first game, um, and also because I would like to get your guys' opinions on which of the two games you guess I preferred with difficulty, I'm going to make sure we play the uh, the next game, which is at home to Ipswich. So let's get forward to that one. If anything happens in between, I'll let you know. Well, things have happened. We have our monthly scout reports back. So we have Fathi Said, uh, who looks okay. That initial overall is not too bad. Uh, Abdullah Ibrahim. Uh, we have Liamin or Liam. We have Hassan uh, and we have Nadir Ahmed. Now, Ahmed doesn't look very good with his stats there. And starting values would indicate that Fathi Said is not that great starting rating. So for now, I'm just going to keep scouting them. Uh, and then we have our English scouts coming back as well. Joel Warner doesn't look phenomenal. Michael Holmes, however, looks Phenomenal 1.2 starting. Uh, 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 I can't even that value my what I'm so frazzled because I was not expecting that. Sign him up, Michael Holmes, mate. What a boy. Uh, Toby Paul, we will keep scouting him. Uh, Ollie uh, Wallace, Wallace, I'm not sure. Keep him scouted as well. Dexter Park looks decent. You know what? I'm gonna scout and sign Dexter Park. Lewis Ward doesn't look like he's gonna be good enough for me. Boys, that could end up being a really, really good month of these scouts here. So we have got Michael Holmes. He is five foot eleven, can play centre back and left back. Looks a good, good talent. I'm going to set him on stopper. I think for now, just because he's relatively short. So let's get that pace up. Let's really make that pace a big part of his game. And then we have. Um, Dexter Park, young centre forward, which is great to see because we are running centre forward. So actually his first thing is going to make centre forward his primary position. Um, shooting is quite low, so that needs work. But dribbling's nice. Pace is a little bit short, but we can work on it. Having a little look here, it is now suggesting our midfield needs an ideal uh, star rating of 18 
We're currently on four, so we are going to try and find someone else that can add to it. Now, two is the most we have to help towards Tick Attacker. Alfie Scott is accomplished and is four star. Hmm. I think the play here, we're going to go with Zachary Jackson because I've just seen at some point down the line, we could always move him towards the attack if that is what we deal uh, deem is necessary. So Zachary Jackson, we're going to bring him in. Uh, Tiki Taki is on a bronze because he is it's not his preferred style of coaching, but does bring that up to eight, which is fantastic. The next edition will be getting the attack on a plus one, uh, which will be good as well. But for now, just wanted to point out that we have signed another midfield coach because it deemed that we probably needed to add one here we are match day against ipswich it's going to be our first game at loftus road for the career mode i'm going with the same starting 11 you can see the form is looking pretty good field is on a minus one period because he's out of position which doesn't help but even so some of our other out position players are now in positive form including Ilias, including aussie which is good to see for both uh but yeah I don't expect this to be anywhere near as straightforward as the game against Cardiff, purely because we're now playing on Ultimate. However, fingers crossed that we can, at the very least, put in a good performance. Uh, whether it's as good, I don't know, but hopefully it's still positive. Uh, but man, feels good to be back at Loftus Road in a QPR career mode. I'm very happy with that. I'm all about it. Uh, and yeah, hopefully we can take on this very good Ipswich side. We were unfortunate with a 1-0 loss against Ipswich in real life. A game that I feel like points could have been shared, uh, but just for one uh, moment that went Ipswich's way. And those games are going to happen. But here we are, QPR versus Ipswich, second game of the season. Come on, you ours. I think this will be a real test of our formation and as to whether it is going to set up and perform the way that I want it to in transitions from defence to attack, making sure those wide players do come back and join uh, in defending the wide areas and then we can really push forward hopefully in numbers and that is a terrible start boys that is a terrible start it's one nil off the bat jackson uh after a fantastic display of a couple of efforts against begovic in the first game look straight at him and it's just bounced through him uh it's really unfortunate it's one that you expect him to kind of keep his hands on and keep out but 1-0, it is the opposite to how we started against Cardiff. Uh, it is six minutes, and it's 1-0 to Ipswich. Okay, here we've got Pal on the ball in his new, more advanced role, not deemed a foul there from the referee. And Ipswich again, and now are going to attack, and they're going to attack pretty quickly, but Pal gets back really, really well. Back to his, what he's probably deemed slightly more usual defensive duties. But hold on a second here, because Willock is going to bring Pal into this now. Look at the space at the back post. We've got the space there. Ilias chair heading is not necessarily his strongest attribute, but it didn't need to be too high up on the priority list there. A simple tap in, a lovely example of that counter-attack working and a lovely example of those fullbacks slash wide players operating in that defence and then get forward, find the space and get the ball into the box because Powell was the player back there who won it, played it into the midfield then we just worked it in a nice little couple of plays. Willock out to uh, Powell. Powell gets that ball in. You saw the run from Ilias Chair. Those centre forwards, exactly what we need them to do. Get in that box, assist uh, with finding the space for Armstrong. Or if the space has been left thanks to Armstrong, also find yourself in it. 1-1, one, one, a very quick response. It's exactly what we needed. Oh, they're knocking this round nicely. But Cook does really well there because for some reason it wouldn't let me change back to him. But we have managed to get it away here. And Powell, again, hopefully going to try and bring this ball forward. But, oh, Clark Sorta has underhit that one. But thankfully, Dezel has pulled him out of what could have been a bad situation. Ozzy now going to bring this ball forward. Going to try and play it through to Smith. It's a bit of a bit of a lapse pass. We get lucky that the Ipswich defender knocks it out. Armstrong finds Ilias Chair here. Ilias Chair going to see Chris Willock on the edge of the box. Oh, the defenders get back in time. I've tried to play it back across the face of goal. I maybe should have hit it the other side where the defenders weren't going to potentially intercept. Uh, we waste that chance there. For chairs pass through to Armstrong wasn't quite enough. But uh, yeah, we're looking positive. After conceding, it has really, uh, really woke us up a little bit. They're playing this round nicely here. Ozzy's got to try and make his way back across. Does enough to potentially put off the oncoming strike, but it does go comfortably wide from Broadhead. 
Paul Smith now going to bring this ball forward. Going to try and play it inside to Dizel. Dizel does really well to find that space there. Armstrong going to play it into Willock, who's going to try and fake shot. Oh, makes a space. I should have played it back to Dizel. I saw that run from him far too late. That is all on me. That is a wasted chance. That really could have been 2-1. Ball over the top here, but Kenneth Powell is going to try and come back and make this difficult to get straight into the box. They've rotated it around quite nicely. Sam Field, the shield, gets in the way. And we do stop that one nice and easily there for Begovic. About 10 minutes left in this first half. It's been pretty end-to-end, -end, boys. This has been a really, really good game. Ilyas Chair. Space here for Armstrong. He's going to turn. He's going to take his time. He's going to look up, find Willock. Willock's going to strike it. He's going to drag it wide. I just expected that to be on target. I really just expected him to find the target. At least test the keeper, but it's not even close. Not long left for this first half here. Potentially one last chance for Ipswich if they can find it. Aluko with the ball out wide. Going to try and cross it. No one really where he's put it. It's not a terrible cross, but it's maybe a little bit too deep. But that is going to be half time. And boys, I'm going to say it. This is fun. This is really fun. This game feels fluid. This game feels quick. I'm really enjoying gameplay right now. And ultimate is the right decision. It has to be said. This feels right. This feels like a good test. But it's also enjoyable. And I'm super, super here for it. Pau is tired. He's getting a lot of the ball after a very, very good game. The other, the last game. I'm going to move Willock to left mid. Actually, I think it makes sense to move chair to left mid. Uh, and we're going to play Coley on that sort of right centre forward role. So he's going to drop into the midfield, whereas Willock's going to be the one to stay higher up a little bit. Um, and yeah, Pau, I think it just makes sense because he is quite tired. Uh, Cook is going to stay on for now, but Dunn will make his way on at some point in the second half and other changes as well. But 1-1, one, one, it's all to play for, boys. Come on, you us. Paul Smith hasn't really had much to do in the first 45, but a bit of a chance here. Finds space in and amongst those defenders. Going to play it across Sinclair Armstrong. Finds his first home goal. He is bagging goals for fun. This is why I'd love to see Sinclair Armstrong get in real life. Get this little flurry of goals. Find a purple patch. Find the back of the net and show this division what he's about. Because I'm telling you, Armstrong is the future, man. He's a good, good player. And I cannot wait to see more from him. Lovely bit of play. The play from Paul Smith is beautiful. He took two defenders out, but he sort of drew one in and then just turned and cut between the two of them, finds a space. Armstrong on his weaker left foot. It doesn't matter. It's 2-1. The turnaround is currently complete. Now we've got to keep this lead because we have worked hard for it. Having Cher play the sort of left mid slash left wing back role, it's going to be amazing to be able to bring this ball forward on both sides. Willock's going to line up a powered strike and it's a good save in the end from the keeper uh making sure we just keep testing him is all we can do here aluko going off i'm okay with he has been a pain he has been a thorn in our side on that right hand side here but now Ilias is going to whip this ball in there i needed to put a little bit more power on it clark sort is going to try and bring it down plays it into chair who's going to look for that back post aussie uh sorry armstrong there possibly could have thrown himself at it more but the defender had it covered i think we are going to make some changes now. Uh, Cook, as I said previously, is going to make his way off the field. As is field, uh, we're going to bring on Dixon Bonner. And we're going to bring on Linden as well for a couple of minutes. So that is, I think, four of my five changes. Am I going to go balls to the wall? Yes, I am. Smith is going to come off. And we're going to bring on Lakesh. Just give him a couple of minutes as well. So now the, uh, the left-hand side is the more defensive of the two. Back to basically what it was like in the first place. So those changes happening. I should see it out. Another goal would be great. But um, the main focus is obviously just not conceding from here. Ozzy's going to try and get it in there. Not the greatest pass. But if he's on side here, I look like an absolute incredible coach. I have just seen like the biggest set piece merchant you've ever seen. It was, it was a poor ball from me. But this one here with Ozzy wasn't what I meant. But, mate, that acres of space, I think, for Jimmy Dunn on the edge of the box. Ipswich players just kind of didn't really react to it. Kind of like, oh, someone else will get it. Linden gets all the space in the world, finds the back of the net, continuing from his firing form initially with his in our QPR career mode before Harvey Hutton appeared in FIFA 23. But, uh, mate, 3-1, and we're looking good, boys. Got some work to do here. Jimmy Dunn being pushed out wide a little bit, but does well. Ilyas Ched did get back to try and help out as well there. But uh, Jimmy Dunn stood tall, did his job. 
very well done to him. Massimo Luongo making his way off. I do love Mass. Great player. Glad to see him doing well because uh, I've got a lot of love for Massimo Luongo. I think he's a real, real good player. Uh, a player that I do very much miss uh, at QPR. But uh, we've got something to defend here. Coley's going to be the man to try and close him down. And Coley does really, really well. He's not the quickest to play, so he's not going to get to that. I did actually ask him to slide, but he didn't. And it's probably a good job he didn't because he probably would have got a booking. But Ipswich rotating it around again. I've asked Chair to try and get close to it. Thankfully, the first man didn't get that ball there as I was trying to defend the second one. But Linden, can he turn into a goal provider after being a goal scorer? Coley, Ryan Coley pulls it onto his left. It's not the best shot. It's an even worse save in the end there really nearly drops to uh willock but thankfully the keeper for ipswich i guess thankfully does get to it in the end but man that could have been really 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 problematic if he just palmed it into willock's path but uh coley unlucky there not to get his second goal of the season already lovely bit of play there coley ends up playing it in to ilias chair and ilias He's going to try and get this ball forward now going to try and play oh i tried to play it into the box for willock to run onto and he ran after the board landed. But Ilyas Cher, I believe, just got man of the match. Fair play to him. He's had a very, very good game. He's also played all over the pitch. He played centre forward. He played uh, sort of right centre forward. He played left centre forward for a bit. He also played left mid and right mid. He has been everywhere. The versatility of Ilyas Cher, I think, is going to prove to be pretty important this season. Begovic out enough there to cause a problem, to stop him really playing where he wanted. Had to play the back hill and it went to no one. But boys, there we have it. A big, big win. It shows that Legendary was not the right call. Ultimate was, that was genuinely really fun to play. Really, really fun to play. Big win there, boys. Great to get a win at home as well. Six points from a possible six, which is great to see. Armstrong bagging his third goal, I believe, of the season. Only had the one chance, but he made the most of it and found the back of the net. But, mate, very happy indeed to get the three points. Big win, boys. I'm, it's back. The QPR crew, it is back. Well, no better way to have started this. I'm really, really happy with this, man. Like, honestly, I, I was not expecting to have come in and this go quite as well as it did. Obviously, the first game, my apologies. I, I picked Legendary because I believe that's what I played last FIFA. Uh, and I expected it to be a similar level of difficulty. Maybe I did the wrong thing uh, and I can only apologize for that. But hopefully you guys are enjoying this. If there's any uh changes you would like to see or any sort of words of wisdom for things to tweak then let me know i will do my best to accommodate things that i think are suitable uh but if you're excited for not only fc24 to be here but this qpr karimo to be here then please do leave the video a like supports me the video the channel and the series out a whole bunch if you're new hit the sub button and turn notifications on to be told anytime that we upload a video as i say this will be coming out twice a week with other uploads and other videos coming out as well if you want to see us on our live stream it's hersey games over on twitch there's a link down below along with a link to my tiktok and twitter feel free to follow those as well but that's it for now thank you guys so much for watching i've been tom you guys have been awesome and i will see you soon look after yourselves and of course wash your hands take care